so this is uh, a section here where on July 15th, after a very wet spring, uh, decided to walk down to the proposed uh, build area where we had already done some survey work and confirmed in the spring that uh, this was the most narrow gap, about 45 feet, uh, bank to bank, where we could set piers uh, without the need to put anything in the creek. Here you can see we're at uh, flood stage level. Uh, we've never seen the water out of the creek over five years in this particular part of our land and uh, so we chose this as the ideal site. If you look closely in there you can see the uh, red flags where we're going to set piers on the south side of the creek. Fast forward to September 15th still looking north across the creek. You can see we built the pier and landing area by sinking two 10-foot hedge trunks uh, eight feet in the ground should keep us at least two feet above the high water mark. Here you can see Tom and Mason positioning the trailer deck. So this is a salvaged uh, National Guard unit uh, semi-tractor trailer rated for 20,000 pounds plus as two 22-inch I-beams running down the center with uh, eight-inch cross beams, not tack welded into the center I-beams, but actually all the way through. Uh, this thing is a monster. Uh, we estimate it weighs at least 16,000 pounds and uh, you know we're just positioning it to uh, try to hit the landing uh, but more importantly have it aligned uh, so that it can uh, be ready to go when we want to use a fulcrum and some toe straps to try to lift it across the river. Um, see how this goes. So here I'm taking on a little tour showing how we uh, have nosed the bridge out over to the creek to where we're not over center mass and uh, you can kind of see what we're trying to do here as I climb up on the bridge and start to walk off and look over and you see there's a lot of odds and ends on the bridge as we're getting ready to uh, set our fulcrums on the north side there and then uh, hook up the uh, toe straps and with any luck uh, we will uh, keep it uh, above plane and land over there on that landing which should leave us just about perfectly level. So Tom's doing some uh, prep work here to uh, set anchors on each side of the piers on uh, both sides of the creek idea here is to strap this down as tight as we can in addition to other future anchor points on this bridge. So if we do happen to get a high water mark, it won't just easily float downstream. So here uh, we're augering out the uh, holes to set the uh, trees with some uh, Ys in them, uh, put them in the ground and be able to use them as fulcrum points to then attach the uh, toe straps uh, to the edge of the bridge and uh, pulled across hopefully in one piece and landed on the other side. This is a, a classic hold my bear moment, do not try this at home, uh, keep small children and animals out of the way. Uh, first thought that we'd be able to use the pallet forks on the uh, New Holland uh, skid steer there, tip them up and drop them in the hole. Uh, but uh, as you'll see, no matter how expert of an operator, Tom's extremely good with this machine and he's done several things like this in his life. Um, still, it will uh, not work and as you can see, uh, you really need to be careful and stay out of the way when you're lifting heavy objects in the air. So plan B, so here's Mason uh, attaching uh, some straps with uh, some buckles. Uh, the idea here is to get up uh, on a good part of the tree. If you'll notice, uh, Tom's uh, lifting is trying to get in position. Um, Might have been a good idea to possibly have a guy wire, but Tom and Mason have worked together a lot in the woods and uh, done uh, similar projects uh, putting these things up in the air. 
Uh, this is about a 12 foot uh, locust tree and uh, we're putting it about four feet in the ground uh, to use as one of the uh, fulcrum uh, parts to winch the bridge across. And as you'll see here, uh, we are going to uh, have success, success. That was a little bit of a uh, pucker moment there when that tree uh, was leaning towards uh, Mason and hopefully he got that buckle on right because uh, that would have been pretty heavy coming down on him. Even at a glancing blow, that'd do some damage. But uh, in the end, uh, the, the fulcrum's upright and in position. The other uh, fulcrum is uh, going in the ground here. It's a, a shorter piece of uh, cherry tree. Um, again, the heights do not have to be uh, exactly the same for the physics to work here. Uh, it just makes it a little bit harder for when uh, they start pulling the straps, they won't be able to see each other because there will be uh, some differences as you'll see. But all the same, uh, you know, it's four feet in the ground, it's up in the air, and it's uh, ready to be used. Here's Tom's dad using a uh, log jack trying to spin the, uh, the left uh, post into position. Uh, it gives you an idea of just how heavy this is. Um, really hard to move by hand, even with a four foot lever. Um, we'll have to have some mechanical assistance here to uh, ultimately get this in place. Uh, Mason was uh, a little bit flummoxed here with uh, getting the log jack on the right side, but as you'll see, uh, the advantage of hydraulics and heavy equipment and some experience, uh, once it gets in place, uh, Tom spins this thing like it isn't even there. So. Again, showing you the real weight uh, on a tree that's uh, a solid uh, 12, uh, 15 feet long uh, with a circumference of about uh, 11, 11 inches through. Um, you work out in the woods, you cut any trees, you know how dangerous this can be sometimes. So here uh, we're just uh, doing some tamping work around the uh, Fulcrum posts, uh, just getting everything kind of secure. Um, not a whole lot of fun to do this kind of stuff, and maybe it wasn't even necessary to do, but I uh, really felt it was uh, the right thing to do uh, with this project. Sometimes you overthink it, and sometimes you under plan. Um, additionally, Tom decided to notch into the uh, tree so that he could attach some support chains so when we pulled on the uh, toe straps, it wouldn't pull the posts over. Here we're getting the uh, tow ropes in place. Um, these are old um, electrical company uh, ropes that have a little bit of a fray on the end that they can't use. Uh, they can lift really heavy stuff. Here's a good look under. You can see the 22 inch I beams and the cross beams. Uh, you'll see where Tom attaches his tow rope is a, a tactical error. It's the only tack welded uh, piece of steel. Uh, on the front end there, and uh, here he's pulling uh, an incredibly long 100, 100 feet worth of this rope through here. It's kind of a mess. It's hot and sweaty work. Uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, but you'll see this tack welded I-beam uh, is not the best spot for this. So um, Mason's trying to do his best to imitate a cowboy, and he does a pretty good job here by throwing this up over successfully. And then... Uh, Good job there. And then on the uh, second one, uh, you'll see he uh, missed the uh, first time. Sorry, that was Ed missing and then Mason being successful. So as forewarned, uh, the left side here, as we put pressure on the, uh, the ropes, uh, we do get a nice lift and we start to plane up, but as you'll see that uh, tack welded piece of steel just kind of rips off there like a band-aid. Uh, always uh, make sure there's no one in between the bridge and the pressure point on the rope. Hey, as you'll see, we got our toe strap issues fixed here, and as we start to move the bridge, it moves really well. It planes way up as designed, but unfortunately we should have had the forks on. Mason can't keep up, and uh, as you'll see, it crashes about three feet short.
jar looking the other way. Fortunately, we didn't do any damage to the bridge. And uh, it's just a simple series of chaining and uh, lifting in position. Uh, as you can see here, uh, now we've got <coughs> skid steers on both sides and uh, it's pretty easy to move this thing around how we want to and uh, doing a pretty good job of just getting the I-beam in place as close as we can to the piers on each side and then setting it in place. You can see um, just how easy it is uh, to move this structure uh, when you've got control on uh, both sides of the bank and uh, we're just kind of inching it into place here and ultimately we'll set it into position and then it's just down to shimming and leveling and uh, the project uh, is secure at this point. A couple quick pics of my dog Burr always in the way and uh, kind of looking back across the bridge at the end of the day and time for some uh, well-deserved beers for Tom, Mason, and Ed. Good job guys. So a couple days later, uh, coming down the path into the bottom, um, had a uh, real experienced guy with this excavator, uh, Mr. Kenny, just does a great job at this sort of thing. We've had him out to clear some land before, and he's just a magician uh, with this big old track hoe. Uh, he's really leveled and moved even more trees and pumped all, popped all kinds of stumps. And uh, you'll see here, he's just doing some dirt work now uh, around the uh, south side of the bridge to start filling in uh, some low spots. Um, really useful stuff here. You can get a sense of how much grading he's done. He's pulled some really great dirt uh, from uh, some high points uh, in this area and uh, now it's uh, ultimately just going to be all leveled out and uh, really be uh, quite a view from each side of the bridge.